I know I'm succeeding when I get them to react visually, verbally. I know I'm succeeding when they're speaking back to others and me spontaneously. I know I'm succeeding when their face is crunching, when they're reacting emotionally. I know I'm succeeding when I get some sort of generalized feeling in that audience. There's an excitement in that audience, that's uh, a chemistry in that audience uh, between me and them. Communication is key. I mean, it's key to uh, our success at work, it's key to our success at home, and it's key to our success at play. They show the pictures of 10 women in this article, and it says, uh, these are only a small number of all the fast women in the company. <laughs> the scriber of that message has no idea the drama that's surrounding this. The extent to which they can understand themselves and their ability to reach others is a key learning in terms of what I do. Sometimes the meanings we assign to others say more about us than them. Humanistic, passionate. Okay, keep going. Pride. I missed that? Pride. Pride? Keep going. I speak on a range of topics, Open. lots of different topics. A human collisions in the changing workplace is all about the, um, the difficulties we have in communicating in a changing environment and how we can communicate more effectively in that changing environment. When it comes to downsizing, it has produced all sorts of new issues over the years. I mean, number one is that uncertainty. We're going to be successful worldwide. And you, you've worked in Milwaukee for 27 years. You will take the next plane out to Buenos Aires. We're going to give you new technology. We're going to give you software. We're going to give you the latest in hardware. And they dumped it on your desk, and then you said, OK, what do I do now? I also talk about uh, understanding misunderstandings in the workplace, and that's all about the communication issues that human beings experience as they communicate daily in the workforce. I would be, as a male, interpreting her direct access, smiling and eye as though she likes me, when in truth, Adele might hate me. How, in fact, we do business, our habits that we assume are shared by others may in fact not be shared by many others. Who tends to use military references more in the workplace, honestly? Men. Men. What kind of references do guys use in the workplace in addition to military references? Give me some common sports references that guys use in the workplace, common ones. Sometimes we assign the meanings that the other person would like us to. Sometimes we don't. I talk about managing national differences which is about uh, how our cultures and business differences are often uh, a source of uh, misunderstandings in the workplace. Honduras, Nicaragua, Mexico, Central America, not South America, but Central America, where I stand with another male, not a female, another male, at zero axis and about, oh, two and a half to three feet. I might even touch Fred once or twice during our conversation. Visible, unwritten, but very powerful norms that guide every national culture. And when business cultures collide, it's all about the human side of business cultural collisions. Often business cultures collide because the people collide, hmm? interpersonally. And that has much to do with the illusion of complete difference, meaning I share nothing in common with them, or the illusion of complete similarity which of course is just as pernicious as the illusion of complete difference. I speak about leadership in the workplace. There are lots of topics. While they're all about different kinds of communication areas and issues, they're all about the ebb and flow of messages. If I can't stop you from having impressions of me, you can't stop them from having impressions of you, what does it tell us about communication, information? It's going on how often? All the time, all the time which tells us communication not only is non-stop, but it's what else? Two-way. Two very, very interpretive. Very personal, very interpretive. Everything I do is customized. I find out something about the audience, something about the organization, something about the goals they have. I then augment my presentation. I use the language and vocabulary that will hopefully reach that audience. My narratives, my anecdotes, my stories are tailored for every audience that I work with. Presentations of mine have been done for the CEOs of some of the largest corporations in the world. On the other hand, um, I work with a lot of managers and employees and, and nonprofit organizations. Whether I'm doing a dinner speech or a speech with 500 people in an auditorium, I'm much the same, meaning the same characteristics have to be shown. Uh, I have to display that kind of enthusiasm, engagement, 
uh, emotion, drama, rhythm, pacing. Bob's wearing a uh, silver gray tie. Bob's wearing an ugly silver gray tie. Inference about Bob? Bob's a chur. Bob's a chur. <laughs> For my tie? <laughs> my presentations are seemingly spontaneous, but there's a method to the madness. We try to methodically rock an audience, give them a sense of wow, a sense of energy, power, a eureka, an illumination, an insight, something that they can take with them and say, you know, I didn't think about that before. There is no way to say please in Scandinavia. You can't say it. You tell me in the US of A how important is the word please. They don't use it. They don't say please. It can't be said. Without content, performance is of little value. Without performance, content is of little value. Unless you can perform content that reaches the group that you're speaking to, there is very little that you've accomplished as a speaker. An audience has to relate to your message. And an audience can only relate to a message when it's put into a package that ultimately is about their lives. All the presentations have something, something in them that they can take with them. And hopefully it's that something that will get them thinking about communication at work, at home, at play. Because clearly my presentations aren't only about what goes on in the work setting, they're about the things that we experience as human beings on a daily basis, no matter what the context is.